Good evening. Right, my new toy. This is the WADSN WD06044-BK or an L3 NGAL. It's a laser for my new air gun. Well, I say it's a laser. It's a little bit more. Right, I have unboxed it already just to make sure it works, but the first thing is, is the unit is really quite small. It doesn't weigh much. I mean, there is weight there, and there's no battery in this at the moment. It doesn't weigh much. But, firstly, what do we get? Well, we get a nice, quite solid box. So that's useful for something, I'm sure. There is a remote switch which is just the standard sort of mono 2.5 millimeter jack plug i believe it's momentary only so there's no hold i don't know yet foam packed uh 3m adhesive sticky pad obviously for the remote switch you do get some labels and I've, I've put mine on already basically but one there one there one there one there what is nice is you can't get them wrong because the case is actually contoured for them so that's quite nice and finally the destruction booklet which is yeah, surprisingly um, there doesn't seem to be, it's Chinese and English, but what there doesn't seem to be is any Chinglish or English. Um, but it just gives you a basic sort of rundown. So nothing particularly too arduous. Battery wise, he says, looking for his battery. Uh, blah, 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 blah. CR123. Or a, is it a 16, 16340? Yeah, CR123 or a 16340. And I've got here one of my rather nice GTL Energy ones. These are quite nice batteries. 700 milliamp, rechargeable, obviously. Um, so one of those. The battery terminal is, that's a terminal screw cover is here i will say it's it's I'm, I'm not a big fan of having dissimilar metals um so personally i'm just going to put a small amount of adhesive uh, adhesive <laughs> lubricant some silicon lubricant just on there just just to help not that i'm anticipating to be unplugging it but i don't know how long the battery will last so battery in and it comes with a nice little thing here to stop you losing the cap it does unfortunately though have a tendency to twist so you can easily just get it out of the way the other thing i've noticed is doesn't seem to i'm sure it's tight but i would have just expected it anyhow notwithstanding so we'll just put that back on keep it out of the way okay so here if you pull this out that's where the remote goes again it's attached with this rather inflexible cap it's a pain in the arse frankly um, so I'm going to just change that for a piece of nice, sort of soft, really thin nylon cord. But that's where the remote goes in, so you just consider that to be a dust cap. Here is the illumination indicator to tell you that the unit is on. And here is the brightness control for the flashlight. Now it's... It's sort of detented, but it isn't brilliant. But it's not what it's for. Here's the function switches. I'll come to those shortly. 
each laser has two adjustment pots. Okay. This is essentially the on switch. At the front, uh, this is the flashlight, but it does have these rather nice removable covers, which are, again, secured in place and just fit on. I don't think... I wonder if that's a magnet. Have I got anything to test it with? Oh, wait a minute. Comes with an Allen key for something. Not sure what. No. No. I, it, it, it almost feels like it's magnetic. But I, I don't think it is. I think it's just these clips. And here's the laser. And I think if memory serves, in my case, the top one here is the green laser and the bottom one is the infrared laser. Now, needless to say, although these aren't particularly powerful lasers, it's not a good idea to stare into them. Um, especially the infrared one, because you can't see it. So if it's doing any damage to your retina, you'll not be aware it's doing it until it's too late. Um, I thought my phone may be able to pick it up. It doesn't. There is a very, very dim glow, a dim red glow. So I know it's working, but hopefully when I get the get it on the gun and get the infrared turned on, we'll see. Now, I'll tell you what I am going to do. Just bear with me one moment. Right, I've just grabbed my kitchen scales. So set to grams, so this is with the battery in. So that's 108 grams. Or 3.8 ounces. So it's actually a surprisingly light little unit. So there's a couple of things I've seen. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, I'll start at the bottom. That is the off position. And, as I say, that that green light there is an indicator. So, I'll, I'll start at the bottom. Okay, there. Now, what that is, is that is... A flashing green laser and I've pushed the button and it's as you can see it's just pulsing and there you can see that the green indicator has lit up I don't think that as the fact it's green has any significance to do okay so that's the first position now you see the dots to the right that's caused by this little cap if I remove that cap you'll see that dot to the right has gone so we'll turn the switch to the next position and the unit goes off. If we press fire, we've now got a constant green laser. And that other little dot, I think that's just a, it's just reflecting off the white surface because I can't actually see that on the image. So I suspect it's just bounced from the lens. So that's just a constant on green laser. We'll turn it to the next position. Of course, of course, the next position being off. Duh. Okay, so the next position. And there's the flashlight and, and I'm sorry about the horrible flickering, but the flashlight and the laser are both on. And again, there's the... Oh, there we go. Ah, that's interesting. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm just adjusting the brightness. And it's obviously something to do with the frequency that's causing the phone to flicker like mad. So that's the green laser with the flashlight. So we'll go to the next position. And that's just the flashlight on its own. And again, we've still got the green illumination at the back. Yeah, look at that. Ah, remarkable. As I turn the 
brightness up and down the flickering disappears it's i will be honest it isn't very bright or at least it, that's that's not true it is very bright but only at close range it's quite a wide angle beam but that's not a problem for me really so that's the torch mode and then you have a strobe mode I'll turn that off just in case and I will put a warning on the front of the video. And this says AM. Now I'm not sure what this is. Is that red laser on? See, I can't. I th it's really difficult to tell. That was the bloody flashlight. Ah, right, okay. So that is flashlight momentary is what that is i turned the flashlight on i thought it was the laser about to go straight in my eye that's why i sort of jerked and reacted a bit um and again you can put that dust cap on and it does it does dim it down a little bit and then this is infrared laser now can you see there, off, on, off, on. So it is working, but obviously, hello my little girl, this cat's walked in. Um, until it's a little bit darker and I get the night vision on the gun, I get the pad out. But at least I know that that is working. Now, the phone, is. I can't see that. With my eyes, that is. And I am being extremely careful, I assure you. Um, I cannot see that glow. So that's a good sign. It's not one of these ultra-mega bright sort of... I forget the exact frequency. But that's the basic sort of functionality. Hello, little girl. That's the basic functionality. It has a adjustable... Weaver rail, which is attached via a screw, and the adjustment is also via a small flathead screwdriver. For some reason, though, there's an Allen key, and I'm not really sure what you would use. No, it doesn't work as a... as a lever. No. Yeah, that's just a standard. So I, I, I've genuinely got no idea other than those two. Does it fit in there? No. Folks, and it's probably me just being a bit thick. It won't be the first time. But I have no idea what that Allen key is for. So... There we go. That's it. Now that's that's it's an AliExpress one. I think it's cost me about fifty-five pound. And I'll be honest, it's a lot nice. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I'll be honest, but it looks to be quite well built. I think it's a copy of a sort of much more expensive military grade sort of thing. Um, that seems to be the um, overarching theme with, with these kind of things. But it looks to be quite well built. It'll be interesting to see how much deflection of movement there is. Because usually it's, it's nigh on impossible to set them up. But it's for me, I use my night vision for sort of 35 plus metres. But a nice... Invisible infrared laser set at 50, set 10 15 meters for when I'm doing some close range ratting is is ideal, is, is wonderful. And the green laser, well, I, I suppose really you can, it's difficult to say what the um, beam divergence will be, but I would imagine it's probably not brilliant to be perfectly honest. 
I can't tell whether they are plastic or glass lenses in there. It would be nice to think that they were glass. It really would. And I would imagine that in the proper military version that they, they likely are. On here, they, if we're lucky, the glass. If we are not as lucky, then they are high quality acrylic. And if we're not lucky at all, then they're just Chineseium shite. But the laser, the, the the green beam at least is it's it's more than powerful enough for what I need. So I'll come back shortly when it's a little bit darker, and we'll get it mounted on the gun, and we'll see whether we can see the infrared laser. It is raining here at the moment. It's done nothing but. Um, so I might not get a chance to do it this evening. But, as I say, folks, there we go. There's a sort of bit of close-up, you can see what the labels sort of say. Oh, so it's a... Yeah, so, okay, so, there. It's a 5 milliwatt laser. Well, that's actually, that's quite impressive. Um, that's That's quite good, I'll be honest. And that's a 10 milliwatt. So I would imagine that's the infrared. I would, uh, I would have thought. It's quite, it, it is. Even though my initial misgivings about the brass and aluminium. It does appear to be of at least reasonable construction. There are no massive gaps anywhere. I say it's, it is, you know, sort of palm of your hand size. Right, thanks for watching. I'll be back later on when we've got it on the gun and we can do some proper IR testing. See you shortly. The remote control. Um, rubber, ised at least. Cable is probably somewhere. Yeah, it's about cable's about six inches long. Standard, as we said earlier. Yeah, seems to be so the sort of last inch, perhaps the last inch and a half, is. Actual switch up here, nothing. But it looks okay. It feels okay. And it, well, I mean, it's, they're not exactly difficult to replicate, are they? Let's be honest. Nice rubberized oh, silicon cable. Yeah, okay. Back shortly. Okay, so there it is mounted. Just nicely on the front of my HW100. I've just zeroed the green laser in, um, which are the controls. As you're looking at the top of the unit, they are the controls on the far side. So that one and that one, not these two. I believe they're for the infrared. Um, but these two here. So they control the green laser. I've yet to do the infrared. I don't think it's dark enough. But I've put it on. No aggro. I can still get to the battery if I remove the sun shield off my pad. Um, I can get to the battery. I can get to the brightness. I'll find somewhere convenient for the remote. Um, but it's it's gone on. And, well, it looks the business, doesn't it? You know, let's be right. It looks the business. So, so far, I'm genuinely happy. But I want to see what this infrared laser is going to turn out to be like. That's, that's for me, that's the real, that was the real selling point. I have a red laser. 
already built into the pad. Um, now I have a much more, and it's that is a weedy, that is a rubbish laser in the pad. It, it's rubbish. It works, but it's rubbish. This certainly appears to be a much higher quality laser. My fence is perhaps 30, 30 metres from here, 35 metres. I was doing it through the window and I can see the green laser quite, quite clearly through the window. Um, it's really difficult to film out of the part. I suppose I could try connecting it to the Wi-Fi and try filming it that way. I might do that, actually. That might be interesting to try. If it works, I'll stick it in here. If not, sorry, I'll, I'll come up with some other way of doing it. 